Well, Dan's had a rather, a rather complex life. Um, when, he, when he was young, we just regarded him as another kid in our family, uh, albeit someone with some particular um, needs. But when he was due to start school, we took the advice of experts and we sent him along to the, the school in, in Grafton that had the uh, support unit attached, which actually wasn't our local school, it was across town, but we were only new to Grafton at that stage and we, um, uh, we sent our other children there as well because we thought it was useful, they all went to the same school and that they could, um, they could support each other. And, but after a little while with, with Dan, we noticed that he wasn't um, learning very much and his behaviour was becoming quite difficult. And when we um, brought this to the attention of the school, um, nothing really much um, changed. And so we started doing our own um, um, research, I guess for want of a better word, into how best kids with disabilities ought to be taught. So we, went, we started reading a few articles and we started going to some workshops and seminars and so forth, which is where we took over family advocacy. Um, and we, we discovered much somewhat surprisingly really, I think, that, um, that children with disabilities really ought not to be educated in segregated sort of situations, but they really do best in the um, mainstream settings and no one's disadvantaged. So we went along to the school with our newfound knowledge, um, thinking that they might be interested, but they weren't. And they, um, they fobbed us off and they um, continued to fob us off really, nothing changed until we became a bit cranky. And then they sort of took us a little bit more seriously, I guess, and then they came along with a series of false promises about what might happen at some indeterminate time in the future if um, all things went well. But as things went, went on, um, false promises continued and nothing changed until we um, lodged a complaint with the Human Rights Commission, which led to a series of, not quite endless series of meetings, but a long series of meetings, and which ended up in a mediation and eventually we were able to find a local school that took Dan. So most of his primary school years he was in main, a mainstream, mainstream school in Grafton where he, he really blossomed. Um, he, he had friends, people would invite, invite him to their place, birthday parties, all that usual stuff that happens when you're a kid. So, which, which certainly wasn't happening when he was in the, um, in the support unit. Um, and you can still remember, you can still remember many of his lessons even from way back then with some, some affection as to how he, he liked those sorts of things. Unfortunately, when he went to high school, or was going to transition to high school, the whole process started all over again and the high school rejected him. And ultimately, with the assistance of the Human Rights Commission and endless meetings and mediations, uh, he went to high school. However, the, the die was cast against him, I guess, and, I guess, and he was really sort of set up to fail. He was a, a kid who had difficulty with, with change, so naturally they gave him 15 different teachers, uh, which was you know, far more than the other kid in the school happened to have. And in the end, uh, he was ultimately um, um, suspended and, and excluded from the school, which led to another series of complaints and which ultimately, human rights commission hearing, um, federal court hearings, and we even went to the high court um, where we lost which is a rather, <laughs> rather sad situation really, but it does sort of show that you don't always, always win. So most of Dan's high school education was, was undertaken um, by distance education, which is pretty awful really, but the great advantage of it is that you do lots and lots of work experience, far more work experience than any other, any kid would actually do, which helped to form our ideas about what Dan might do in, the, in his broader life after he left school. And so by the time Dan had finished school, um, we were sort of different sort of people, I guess, and we had a much firmer idea of how we might build a good life, a good life for Dan, and, um, uh, and the sorts of things that we thought might be useful components of all that. So we, we, we developed ourselves a, a vision, which is in our case is a, a bit, big picture, I guess, really, but, but it was about um, building a, a a good and valued life for Daniel Hogan using natural supports and intentionally creating an enduring community of support around him, which we've used as a bit something of a touchstone from then until now when we continue to do that. And we also ask ourselves two questions before we actually do anything, which is really about, we ask whether this will enhance Dan's image and will this enhance Dan's skills. And we thought 
in our naivety, I guess, that if we could only convince ADEC that they could give us control of Dan's funding, uh, we would do a much better job than any of the so-called services around the place, which at the time was a seemingly impossible ask, and it ended up in another series of, of um, endless meetings and cavalcades of public servants who were acting this and acting that and everything else, but I guess people here know, know some things about some of that sort of stuff. But when everything almost seemed lost and many months had gone past, they suddenly rolled over and said that they would let us do it. So we, we got to manage um, Dan's community participation funding. So we set up our own little, um, well I guess in, in many ways is a, like a non-profit business really, which we called Good Life Venture, and away we went. Because we, we knew Dan's interests much better than anybody else did, and it may not be, be perfect. And we, we genuinely took him the things that he did serious, seriously, even the somewhat eccentric, some of his particularly eccentric interests about various things. Um, and he knew his likes about it, his love of newspapers and, and these, a whole range of things he likes to do, including owning, an, owning his own airline, which we're still working on. But you never know, what was kind of up there when we did our little exercise a little while ago, I, I suggested that Dan, the role Dan might like to have as a pilot. So we got a whole lot of bright ideas, so you never, you never know what might happen. And so we, we recruited some assistants um, for Dan, uh, <coughs> who, who are actually really recruiting his peers. And in reality, is he really recruits them. Um, well, he certainly does now. And so we, we have, have people who are pretty much Dan's own, own age, and who um, you could just mistake for his friends, really. And they uh, assist him in his, every, in his everyday life. And they're, um, so their, their job really is to take Dan and all his interests really seriously and work out how you can make them, those sorts of things real in a way that still enhances Dan's image and adds, adds to his skill um, development. Um, and the, and they, they try to link him up with useful things to do. They try to link him up with, with, with lots of people, particularly those sorts of people who might have some potential to be his friend. And they try to get as many people as possible in Dan's life. 